Okay, welcome back. And today I'm going to be looking at this book, A Gremlin in the Works. It's a hardcover book published by Bitmap Books, uh, written or put together and by Mark Hardestry. I say put together because it's not so much written uh, as a collection of interviews. And as you can see, it spans the company Gremlin, in Gremlin Graphics, Gremlin Interactive, uh, from 1983 through to 2015. Um, and look at the size of it. You can appreciate the number of pages. What is this? 555 pages, I think. Um, and this is actually fairly new because it's been republished, um, reprinted, reissued as a single hardcover book. I think previously it was released um, a few years ago now uh, as two, two uh, paperback books which went into a um, slipcase. So there's a slightly different format. I don't know which I prefer. I haven't got the first version. I've only got to pick this one up. I like the design. It's got the sort of Gremlin logo there. And as I say, it's a collection of interviews. So it's not a picture book or an art book per se. Uh, it's not it's kind of a story but told through a series of interviews with key staff so here's the uh, contributors page um they call them the founding fathers here kevin norburn and ian stewart and then various people here look um and, and some people from other companies sort of like magnetic fields and so on us gold quicksilver and yeah goes to the thanks some dedications here so i'm not going to go through this whole book because we'll be here all day but here's the contents kind of you know you, you're sort of creeping through the story year by year some of the uh, chapters focus on specific games um you can see uh here that's about infograms come into the story so yeah let's have a quick flick and i'll, I'll give you a bit of information as we go ian stewart uh, has provided the forward there um, and I'll just put a little disclaimer. I actually did work for the Gremlin company. It was called Gremlin Interactive at the time. Um, for a few years, I worked on the help desk. So I do actually um, you know, have a specific interest in this book. Uh, and some of this is really interesting. Some of the people that they're interviewed for this book I knew and worked with. Um, and some of the stories uh, are really nostalgic, actually, for me. Dear Luke. With regards to our telephone conversation of today, I'd like to confirm the following information. We've got a forthcoming interview at the Greenhouse in Bowden Street with Carl Cave as the quality manager at the time. And here's a second letter, look. 27th of March. Dear Luke, I'm pleased to give written confirmation of our decision to offer you the post of development support grade 8 with Gremlin. Amazing. As with all staff, you will be required to complete a three-month probationary period I uh, had to sign a contract, got 21 days holiday, hours of work was 9 to 9.30 till 5.30, Monday to Friday. During busy periods, we would expect you to work whatever hours were required to perform your duties fully. Overtime would be paid for work performed. Yeah, quite a lot of overtime went on. Salary was 6500 a year. That is, um, well, at the time, it wasn't amazing at the time, especially for a graduate, but... Um, it was a really good job and, you know, every, well, a lot of people, very desirable job, I would say. So, um, so there's a lot of competition you know, for, for these uh, roles. It's paid monthly. Uh, looks like I was starting on the 30th of March. I had to call Carl Cavers to let him know if it wasn't convenient. That was amazing. And I did start. One last thing. Let's look at this. A pay slip. Amazing. It says Gremlin Interactive. This is dated... And the 9th of so September 1998. And you can see here, like I got £629 that month, and that did actually include £84 of overtime to pay national insurance and stuff. So, yeah, that wasn't much to live on. At the time, I was living at my mum's, so I didn't actually have to pay rent anywhere. But wow. But yeah, I worked on the help desk. I was on the phone at the phone help desk. This was back before YouTube, of course, and walkthroughs as they exist today. I basically have a series of Word documents that were written, um, guides and walkthroughs to games. I basically looked after the, the, the phone, so people called me, 
with um, they wanted cheat codes, they wanted walkthroughs for games, wanted to know when new games were released, all kinds of different inquiries. Also email and um, and written correspondence often got letters, from, especially from, from youngsters, saying how much they loved the games or again asking when the next actual soccer was going to be released and so on. So I really enjoyed that. I had a little role to play in the, in the company. I'm just trying to see when they when you first have a new person that's not been mentioned before it sort of spells out their initials i'm just trying to find an example of this otherwise you just have the two um letters can't find an example like oh, malcolm gillett for example or gillett mg so uh, and there's often these little green bits of text which set the scene uh, and then you get some questions and answers and it goes on like this there's a lot of text in the book um, but there's also lots of other interesting kind of tidbits screenshots um, stuff that's been scanned in letters what's this some sort of royalty advance there are letters of employment so it's really interesting um this book unusual format i would say there's a bit of mark there so i'm gonna you know go through a few of the pages i'm gonna do it all gremlin graphics 1984 that's when that turned into reality in his the first games from Gremlin Graphics, we've got Suicide Express, um, Black Thunder, Tony Crowther's Percy the Potty Pigeon on the Commodore 64. So yeah, this book has got interviews with um, sort of senior management, it's got the translation specialist in it, all kinds of different people, um, programmers, and lots of, yeah, old photos and um, screenshots of the games, or the actual um, inlay cards, instructions for the games. As you can see. So I spent quite a few hours curled up on a sofa indulging in this book and uh, and even then you know I was skipping bits. Um, Love for the old cassettes that the games used to come in. There's something nice about those. You could hold those in your hand. They weren't uh, they were physical things. So we're on page 75 out of over 500. Um, just going to see if there's anything specifically interesting that I can show you. Here's a, that was when it was Gremlin Graphics with the Gremlin logo look. And it was based on Carver Street in Sheffield. It did actually relocate to Bowden Street uh, to a bigger building called the Greenhouse, which uh, is where I was also based when I worked there. It's a lovely building. Uh, it was very sad it got uh, knocked down after after Gremlin and Infograms and just levelled and then they built some student flats I think on top of it which is a shame because it was a lovely building and I wanted to be able to walk, keep walking past there and remember my Gremlin days but no, just in the mind now so there we go, okay here's my spectrum graphics there so we've got, who are we interviewing here talking about music I don't know who that is. Chris Schwigley. From a game called Bounder. I actually wanted to be uh, a music, a music, a game music uh, writer, if you like. Wrote quite a bit on the Amiga. That never was really quite good enough. Never quite made it. Did want to do that though, that's what I wanted to do. I'd often like load games up and then I just leave the title screen running because I like listening to the music. Didn't actually play the game. It might sound a bit weird to most people, I think. Or, or you know, like you get to like the the end screen after you've died. I just leave that play in the credits. I really like that tune or something like that. Right. So I'm going to just skip through loads and loads of pages here because anyway. Da 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 da. Programmers, 1987. The years are flying by. There's more photos. And more sprites. What's this? Personal computer show, floor plan. Presumably Gremlin must have been here. Um, there's alligator software there. US Gold. Look at that. Ocean Software. Melbourne House. Oh, I'd love to go back in time and just attend that. That would be an experience. Wow, look at that one. Where's this? By 1989, the show was a different story. Jenny Richards and Ian Stewart have begun the process of regaining control of the company from Jack Brown. I'm just reading this completely out of context, aren't I? Nineteen, not into the nineties now. 
magnetic fields. I love the supercars games. They were amazing. And again, very good music. I'm skipping loads of pages. Zool, Gremlin game, of course. Some of the later games that I was, I remember kind of working there when they came out. Realms of the Haunting, Hard Wall, um, Men in Black had just come out, and the actual soccer game, which was tennis. Realms of the Haunting was very underrated, I think. Good sort of story game, pretty creepy. Uh, so I think they had people like Michael Owen came and others to do the motion capture. I don't know if they've got any pictures of this. There's definitely some celebrities that have Sheffield Wednesday and England footballers, Andy Sinton and Chris Woods. Yeah, yeah. Did he do an actual golf, I think, as well? Uh, so, yeah, look at that. What a lot of interviews, lots of stories, lots of backstories and opinions. Sarah Bennett, she was the translator. A localization expert, she could speak millions of languages, uh, well, maybe not millions, but yes, yeah, so there's French, Italian, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, and Russian. So she helped translate them, make them make sense in all the other languages. Pretty key. Um, yeah, this is a normality game, that was a bit, it was quite popular. I seem to remember from the help desk. I actually made a little program that logged all the different kind of queries as they came in, so kind of which game they were about. Um, what the question was, what the solution was, and how many calls or emails I had on those. This was the uh, greenhouse on Bowdoin Street that I was talking about. That was a bit like a ship, I think. Um, and the, the entrance is at the front there. Uh, but it's all been leveled because it's not there anymore. It's a real shame. And in here, one of the rooms where employees would wind down with an arcade game. We had a smoke room, I remember that as well, back in the days when you could smoke in a building. And uh, you could go in there, I smoked at the time, I'm ashamed to admit, uh, but you got real cross-section uh, of the company in that room, sort of choking and stuff on the fumes and the ceiling was obviously really stained and it was bad. But um, yeah, you got some good rumours when you went in there, some good gossip. So in 1999, for example, they released Actual Golf 3, Actual Pool, Actual Tennis, Premier, Manager 99, Tanktics and Wild Metal Country. Yeah, brought a lot of games out. There's the Infograms logo. Look on the building once they took over. There it is again. Yeah. I used to get a lift home with like the caretaker who lived near me. Very kind guy. So, so the end of the book talks about the end of Gremlin and what happened, how it came to be after infograms and a lot of people went off to another company called Sumo Digital um, and I believe Sumo Digital is still going quite a few ex-Gremlin staff ended up working there on various of their projects da, 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 da. so we're nearly at the end some nice graphics there, I don't know what game they're from That Mutt Street, a scene from Little Diddle 2, the unreleased sequel to the 1993 cartoon adventure. I was going to say, I didn't know they made a second. They obviously didn't, or it never got released anyway. I'm going to leave you with these logos, how they evolved over time. I kind of like that one best, I think. But remember this from all the kind of letterheads that I had to send out to people. I did reply to all the letters that I got. And there's Mark Hardestry. Hardest D. Ah, oh, get it right, man. Get it right. Yeah. Cool. Green. Very green. Very nice book. Absolutely packed with gremlin memorabilia and stories. So, if you if you if you remember gremlin, if you weren't there, or if you just played the games and you want a little trip down memory lane, this is the book for you. And this second edition, as I say, it's just come out recently. Um, grab it while you can. Thanks for watching. See you next time.